Good morning everybody, it's Marco and I have COVID hair as you can see. It has been a long lockdown again this winter and of course as soon as some hairdresser lets me into their salon I will make sure to trim this make it into a more presentable format. Until then, you are stuck with me with this exact haircut. I just took the SysOps uh, beta exam, the AWS Certified SysOps Engineer beta exam. Uh, it is a new exam format. Uh, they are including questions and a practical part. So it's really cool because it does validate your actual knowledge that you can actually configure stuff. Um, it asked me to, you know, spin up some EC2 instances and then it asked me to configure some S3 and then it asked me, asked me another um, feature. It doesn't really matter what it was. Um, I found that the EC2 uh, part, the uh, CloudFormation part were very straightforward. However, the EC2 had a bit of uh, misleading instructions, instructions that were a bit ambiguous about what it wants you to do. Uh, so essentially, yeah, I commented in the exam itself. You can leave some comments in the exam, commented uh, what I felt about that particular question. Um, so maybe they'll fix it or maybe they won't. Otherwise, the 54 odd questions, something like that, that I got before the practical exam uh, mostly covered AWS in a much broader sense than the current SysOps exam. There was a, a bit more emphasis on things like federation uh, with Active Directory, how to federate different services with Active Directory which was not present in the previous versions. And you need to know that specific service in uh, the exam itself to understand how that service federates with um, Active Directory. So that was something that was new. Um, yeah, may maybe like about 40% uh, of the questions were very similar to the ones that uh, they did have before. So basically very basic questions about services and service features and the rest were uh, a more detailed format I think like very very detailed compared to the previous exam uh, which was fairly basic uh, fairly easy to pass even if you've never been in a sysops role I think this exam covers sysops roles much more specifically right sysops was kind of like oh yeah like the jack of all trades you know you have to know all services you have to know what they do how they function to configure them a little bit but you don't need to be an expert you don't, you didn't really need to be in a sysops role to pass the previous exam however with this one you definitely have to be in a sysops role and i would say a year's experience in sysop role with a wide range of services is very important not just spinning up ec2 instances and playing around with um, you know maybe some dynamo or s3 but uh, knowing services like elasticsearch uh, federating uh, identities with active directory doing a lot of iam groups and things like that and those will be crucial of course Role is always the correct answer. That still stands, right? That's for any AWS exam when they talk about IAM privileges. A role is always what you should be using for access to a service. So that was what uh, I was really like eager to see was the the change in questions, whether they're really more focused on sysops. And I think, yes, they did a good job. Uh, there are some semantics, some, you know, spelling issues and how a question is worded or maybe there was an ambiguous one where the answer could have been like A and B right it could have not been C and D at all but uh, A and B both were valid options and there was no emphasis on whether you want to do it cheaper whether you want to do it less management it's just like which option would you choose to do this and then A and B were both completely plausible and equally um, doable however one was more of a managed option, the other one was more of a, a self-serve solution. Like for example, let's say 
I'm, I'm not gonna discuss too much about the internals. Um, so I'm gonna say like maybe using an RDS database versus spinning up an EC2 instance with a database on it. And I could not for the life of me find uh, any detail in the question that would actually talk about this needs to be the simplest or this needs to be the cheapest possible or the most effective. It was just like, which one would you use to run this kind of service? Um, and then with that kind of question, what are you gonna answer, right? There is no right answer. If you have two right answers then. So I just eeny meeny miny mo then chose one of them. Um, I chose the one that mentioned the managed service because typically you're gonna be using managed services because they are more efficient. They can actually be more cost effective down the road uh, to use. Again, it depends on the use case. It depends on which service and what you're using it for and how you're using it and how often it's being used and whether this is something that's you know event-based or this is something that runs 24 7 it's quite um quite variable right so you always have to consider those uh, you always have to consider those factors anyway that's what i wanted to say about my sysops exam experience it was quite quite a good experience um, the first time that I took the exam, I actually took the exam twice. The first time that I took the exam, uh, the exam actually broke in the middle. Uh, so I got through the 50 questions or 54 or whatever questions. And then I clicked next to do the practical part and the practical part uh, actually broke midway. And essentially um, when I was trying to complete the practical part, it just said, I can't load your questions. This this exam is terminated. Uh, luckily enough, the exam provider uh, acknowledged that there was an issue on their side, and of course, uh, actually gave me a coupon for repeating the exam itself. Gave me a refund and a coupon. So not only did I get a uh, not only did I get a, a free exam, not only did I get do the exam very early on, I actually got to do a, a free exam because of the issue itself. However, if you're doing this uh, SysSoft certification right now, and if you're deciding whether to go for the beta exam or to go for the uh, actual exam that's still valid, the previous version of a SysSoft, well, or current version of SysSoft's exam, you should know that if you take the beta exam, it will take 90 days for after the, um, 90 days after the trial period, the beta period, which uh, is until this summer, it will take 90 days for them to um, validate your score right so you won't get a pass or fail for the next six months if you take it right now uh, you'll get it later this year right so that's something to consider so if you are taking this for your work or you're taking this as a requirement for your customers you definitely should not be taking the beta exam uh, I took the beta exam because I am working actively on producing a book for the new exam itself. Uh, it will be an exam cram from Pearson. So that's something to look forward to. Um, I'm really eager to get the project uh, rolling like with full speed right now. I'm in the beginning stages um, and taking that exam was crucial to understand what the new exam format will be. And of course, to, to help uh, students better prepare for the exam so yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be a wild ride thank you very much for watching my channel i do hope that uh, you if you find this content interesting uh, do subscribe and you know tell me what you think about the content tell me comment on the on the video uh, tell me what you want me to talk about as well that's also something that's uh, really important for me to know what my audience is interested in um, I will see you in my next video. Bye.